Hello. Thank you very much for being here today. It's Friday. And uh, today we're gonna be talking to a new artist that is going to be represented by the Art Design Project. He's straight from Sweden. His name is Mikkel Kenta. And uh, sorry if I don't pronounce that well the name so <laughs> yet. But he is going to be talking with us about his new body of work. Uh, it is the first time that it's going to be out there and you guys have a great preview to see this amazing work all the way from very far away from Miami. So we are going to invite Michael or Mikkel uh, to join us and um, he's going to be giving us a run around where, about his work. Let's take a look. Hey, Jean Carlos. How are you? I'm fine. I wanted to start off with showing you my beautiful city here in Gothenburg before we go into the studio. That's great. That's yes. fantastic. We're actually having good weather here in Sweden. We don't usually have that, like you guys in Miami. What time is it there? It's uh, 6 o'clock, 6 p.m. So it's in oh. the afternoon. But here now, the sun is out, uh, up until late. So it's midsummer, you know? I know, that's fantastic. Yes. Thank you very yes. much for giving us that tour. <laughs> yes, a little bit of a tour. So here's uh, the whole building of my printing place. It's actually not my printing place, but it's hosted by Art Farm Design. Uh, my dear friends, it's like family friends. And here Great. you start to get the look of what we're doing here. I can see that two pictures. We have a, a lot of rooms, a lot of printers, but uh, I'm going to put my... Perfect. Hold on, hold on. Perfect. Like Great. Well, thank you very Hello. much for joining us today. Thank you. How's yeah. everything in Miami? In Miami, the weather is great. And uh, I don't know what is going on here, but it's everything that you see in the news is pretty much what's going on here. Kind of crazy. Uh, I know, I know. <laughs> I was supposed to be in Milan now, but I, obviously I can't go, so I've been stuck here. But yeah. I've been stuck in this in this place printing, so I'm not I'm not too sad. So okay. no bad, no bad. You know, it's so funny. I want I wanted to start to introduce uh, uh, people from this side of the world. You know, Mikhail um, or Michael, I call it. <laughs> it's, yeah, um, yeah, Michael. Yeah. It was a very successful uh, model, and and then a TV star and have done movies and commercials and many many things. Uh, yeah. He's always been, you know, interested in photography. So we met through one of your reps around the world, Roberto. Roberto uh, yeah. um, and, um, you know, we re realized at the end that we have a friend in common and another artist that I represent, Mada Von Hanau, which it was, her name is Mada Gomez. Uh, and uh, wow, what an amazing coincidence. Yeah, I'm happy to meet you. So me and Roberto have been friends since ages. I used to live 15 years in Milan all the time, full time. So he was yeah. working as a stylist and we worked uh, on a lot of projects together. And, How fantastic. Uh, yeah, that's Robbie. So. And when, when did you start the, your interest in photography? How, how, what, you know, you always were, you know, doing this amazing, you know, as, as a model fashion campaigns. And then when yeah. did you realize that you wanted to be the, behind the camera? The thing is that I actually started with photography when I, I mean, not started. I got my first camera when I was like seven years old because my father was a photographer. And okay. we had, you know, in our house, we had a print studio, like uh, analog studio where we're printing prints. Uh, in, in, in the basement. So I've been like in the lab since I was like seven years old. Oh, wow. Uh, so I started out as a photographer. O of course, I did not, I shot like nature and everything, I, I, friends and stuff like that. But I have like an album with my first pictures when I'm se seven years old. So I got, I got like a SLR camera when I was seven years old. So I'm, I started off early, but uh, and then everything moved on and I, I got the, uh, I mean, I was like, like a kid, I was even looking in my father's magazines, you know, those photographic magazines. Uh, and I got the inspiration. And so I have to thank my father for my, for my uh, profession. But then 
I mean, moving on, I, I, I studied uh, natural science, but actually I started first graphic design. Uh, so it's kind of similar. And I was a printer for a while and I, I've been doing all this kind of, everything was like connected with images and with art and stuff like that. And then, um, then I went to Milan as a photographer, but uh, yeah, then I became a model and then I went back. So you went as a photographer? I was a photographer, was a photographer long, long, long before I became a model. And but, that, but that's a, an interesting story. You went as a photographer to Milan and then yes. you were over in thousands of no, magazines. Because when I was studying uh, natural science, I was not I was not sure that was what I wanted to do. So at my spare time, I was an assistant to a photographer in Gothenburg, who was a fashion photographer. But fashion in Gothenburg, that, by that time, in like in the 90s, was not that great. So if I want to do something, I want to do it the best possible way. But I'm with, with the best and even the models and stuff. So I, so I wanted to go to Milan. Actually, it's a friend of mine who invited me, a model. And we went together. And uh, but I did not find it so easy to find work in Milan in the beginning. So when the, when the money started to run out, uh, out I ran out of money and uh, I was offered some jobs as a, a model. And I started, I was thinking that I, w I could learn more as a model than as an assistant photographer, because as a model, I could look at a lot of people, you know, work. That's, a, so that's, that's a very good, that's a very good I, I tried to be smart. You know, it's so funny when I start to Google you and, and trying to find out more work about you, uh, I just found thousands and hundreds of covers of magazine and big model campaigns. You know, you were equophile of Marco Schwarzenegger, which is kind of like one of the biggest models of your country. Yeah, 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 yeah. My, my, my great friend as well. We actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. we met, uh, when did we meet? We, I think we met like 96 the first time, the first time. He was already famous and doing a lot of big campaigns. I was new, you know, and uh, I cannot tell the story because Marcus tells it better. Um, but yeah, he, he felt a little bit of competition when I was, I, I, I was coming. <laughs> yeah, no, I remember no. he used to work out at Equinox in New York and, and I was, of course, yeah. completely in shock. Now he was amazing. According to me, the best model ever. I mean, he's, he's like a Greek god. Uh, it is yeah. fantastic. Yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. And that's, I always been fascinated and uh, interested about uh, the, uh, the male physique. And uh, I mean, and he was number one. Yeah, uh, number so one. I saw a lot of picture of him. And he was, he was already famous in Sweden when I, before I, I became a model. So, and then we became good friends. So, and we still are. That's fantastic. You know, you know, it's so funny because to, to have this amazing career and then suddenly start to, you know, with your experience that you describe now, with your father, you start to photograph these incredibly dramatic black and white images of people in Ibiza, which I'm going to start yeah. with a slide. See it in the behind. Yeah, okay, you can see it there, yeah. Yeah, and, and you start to find these amazing characters, you know. Yeah. How did you do that? How did, how did the inspiration start? I mean, it's... For me now to do these images are pretty simple actually, but it's it's a evolvement of techniques and uh, I mean shooting a lot of campaigns and photographing a lot. I didn't want to get uh, distracted from like uh, backgrounds and uh, environments, so I just decided to do with a black. Uh, but that was always interesting for me, just to see the people. So you can, I, I think when you're not distracted, you can see, they say that, you know, the classic one, the, the black and white, you can see the soul of, soul of a person. But even more so, I think when everything is like, just uh, concentrated on the, on the face of the person. That's, that's what I did in Ibiza. You know, Ibiza is the most beautiful place in, I mean, one of the most beautiful places in the world. And I decided to shoot against a black backdrop sounds kind of stupid, honestly. But for me, it's the most beautiful. I, I will continue to do so wherever I go in the world because I think it's the most beautiful thing. Plus, of plus I think it's an up, upgoing project in a way. You know, yeah, 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 for sure. all these amazing characters. There, yeah. There's almost like a drive, you know, around yeah. the world. Tell us about 
these these you know there is a lar a larger crowd of these people in Ibiza who live very freely, but there are also in many other places in the world. And and I see just a, a bit of an Irving Penn kind of black and white inspiration of confront the spirit of this person in the camera. And, and this amazing lady just wearing her jewels and I can see the, the you know, her hands in such a purity. They, they yeah. really are very striking. Yeah, it was, I mean, I was fascinated also about I don't know if you remember the Wild West with uh, Richard Avedon. That was actually a white backdrop, but still he went out to the West in America and he, he, he photographed all those interesting characters against the white wall. And I found, find it one of his most amazing work uh, and kind of the same for me. So what we did was we went, I mean, I always been attracted to the hippie culture all, all the time when I travel, you know, I'm kind of attracted to that. And uh, so me and my good friend, when I went to Ibiza, I, I stayed at, in Ibiza for, for like six months in uh, when was it 2017 when I did, did these pictures. And um, we went to hippie markets. And I was like, there were so many different characters, you know, uh, the expression of freedom. And uh, I just got curious. <laughs> I, yeah. I became friends with them, you know, so we, we, we invited them to our house, we had a beer, we started to talk and I took portraits, that's what, that's what we did, you know, they became friends. Because uh, they're very, they're very shy in a way, they're not really, they don't want to share their, their mystery and, their, and no. their lifestyle with anybody. No, it was kind of difficult to get, I mean, at the end, you know, of course we had to ask and we, we but since I was there for a long time, we got to know them, and I got to know them. And uh, at the end, uh, they were very reluctant in the beginning, so to speak, because... Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm happy about the project. It's a, it's a great memory from Ibiza, and uh, I, I will go back for sure and meet these people. They, they're, it's funny because there are some people that are just... People believe they're just bikers that go around, but some of them are mechanics or... or, or or they have businesses, they just adopt this particular lifestyle as, a, as, a, as, yeah. a, as a everything. But nowadays in the beat it's a lot of rich hippies too. These guys are not rich, rich hippies, there's a there, there's the real, real deal. But there's a, you know, I've been, you've been to the beats a lot of times, I, I suppose, no? It's a, the hippie, no, yeah. there's a, I've been in the 90s rich in the 2000, it's just like, you know, I've been from the times that you have to get directions in Ibiza, you know, go straight. If the moon is looking at you on the right side and you find a good <laughs> stone, you make a right. And then if you find, and it's like get addresses and Ibiza is just the most unusual place in the universe. I yeah, love it. It's great it's friends. one of the best places to get lost as well. In Ibiza, you can get lost and you're gonna have a great time, so. Absolutely, you're absolutely right. Tell us about this character and how you manage to light up this this just incredible photos they almost look like all pictures in a way yeah and i mean i i shot because i shoot film as well i shoot analog and i shoot digital these are actually shot with the digital digital camera but more or less in an analog way so i already knew what i wanted to do before and it's it's daylight it's but it's a special technique with, with, which i'm using and uh, yeah th Honestly, I did not spend a lot of time, almost no retouching. So it's like, yeah, later. Almost no nice retouching. And, wow, it is amazing. And, yeah. and natural light and, and just there, you know. It, and it's, for me, it's a, they shine, the people, they shine. It's to have something special, special aura. I mean, of course, it's a little bit of lighting. If I would have put the flash, it would not have been the same. You know, I wanted to keep it very intimate and uh, like close so you can see like everything is you can see like shadows here and it's like i want to very intimate was my idea and i think i i, I think you got it with because, the because they have they have a level of humanity and dignity they don't they are not confronting the camera you know they just surround it to your to your yeah camera. The, the i mean the biggest inspiration for this series was actually I'm in love with the North American tribe, uh, native Indians, you know? And when you see all those uh, Indian chiefs from uh, 1800, they always sit like proud and they look 
straight into the camera and they, you, can, you can feel they're proud, you know? And this was what I wanted. I wanted them to be proud. You could see that. Yeah, I wanted they, I mean, you see there's no smiling. I wanted mystery, but I wanted to see that they were proud, like an Indian chief, kind of. That was my and, and, you know, direction. It, it's great that you, you bring along that, because they are proud, but they don't uh, uh, give a sensation of uh, scare you. They just have their feeling alone and this sort of isolated world, because yeah, they're like, a little bit isolated, no? The way I see it is like, like Native Indians for me, which always attracted me since I was a kid. I was always attracted by Native American Indians and the tribes because of uh, the freedom, I think. And this is another thing I wanted to show in the photos, like the free spirits, obviously, these guys. They, show, they, they, they decided to live uh, a different kind of life, have a different kind of lifestyle. So, um, and I think because they want to be free. And that was what I wanted to show, like the level of dignity do, in the do, picture, do like you have, life. Yeah. Do, you have this, life. Uh, do you have these characters in Sweden? Uh, I don't know. It's so cold here in Sweden, so they, they cannot go out. <laughs> like we're, no, we don't have this kind of. I mean, if I if I would choose to be a hippie, I would definitely not choose uh, Sweden. That's for sure. So we don't have, so I'm going to move a little bit so I can see. Yeah, see. because, because uh, we don't no, have them we in America. Have, we have them, but uh, they probably stay home in their apartment. <laughs> because we do, have them, we do have them in America, you know, and I think this is an outgoing yeah. project, you know, worldwide, because there are these sort of groups of, uh, you know, to get inside this amazing sort of lifestyle and be able to, to 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 surrender to your camera in a way is is yeah. quite unbelievable. But a lot of people think that oh you're a hippie you're uh, like uh, homeless or something like this oh these are homeless but it's so far from the truth you know it's just just like a hippie they, sh they choose a different lifestyle that's that's it they they're working they're doing stuff they're selling stuff at the market for example the guy here Pedro is is he is selling at the hippie market he's selling a lot of art a lot of stuff. He's an amazing guy. And then for the winter, they go to, for example, Pedro, which is shown on the screen. He went to Sadhguru, which he used to be, he used to have uh, Osho as a guru. I don't know if you know the Indian. Of course, of course, Osho. Osho, yes. And now he's going every winter to see Sadhguru, which is another, uh, yeah. Uh, another very, guru. <laughs> another guru, a little bit happier, I have to say. Uh, an amazing According to me, amazing guys on Guru. Yeah. And um, Jesus, uh, like you see on the screen now, he's working on the hippie market. I met him at uh, San Juan. And uh, yeah, and he's selling a lot of these things you see on Burning Man, those glasses and the special headpieces. He's selling. Yeah. He's an amazing artist. He's an amazing artist. Yeah, no, I can see. And Francisco is going to all the discotheques on Ibiza, you see, on his. Uh, I don't want to point on the screen, but you see all the bracelets he have. Uh, uh, he's going to, I mean, for free, of course, because he's a character in Ibiza. And uh, yeah, he's going everywhere to all the discos, to the VIP, looking like that. Yeah, no, I, I, I have seen it. You know, I have yeah, seen yeah, you've it. seen him, right? It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a permanent VIP at Pasha and, yeah. and those places, which is amazing. You know, what I, ad I, I admire about your work is how deep you got into this this particular tribe and, and trying to you know can can you show us I, I wanted to talk about the black and white um, body of work first and then talk yeah. about the color work can you show us close a little bit more the image can you go with your yeah, phone yeah, yeah. I can take away the phone hold on actually yeah. I, I printed today a print of Mariette you know this amazing oh, woman adore can you see it here yes a little lower Oh, she looks amazing. You see, all the, you see all the texture? It's fantastic, yes. Yeah, she's an amazing woman. Mariette is her name. And it, she was working in the, in the um, Ibiza market, uh, uh, the hippie market, one of them, close to Ibiza. And uh, she was also an artist doing all this. I have to do a little bit of advertisement because this is really all her art here you know it's like inspired by the maasai warriors now you cannot see it because it's not in color but amazing jewelry you can find 
it is and, uh, and here is one it's not the final uh, it's a francisco which we printed with the technique here that uh, my mentor in printing uh, uh, has been teaching me in aluminium okay and then you and then you submerge some of these pieces and and wax them and and yeah they become very unique tell us about that this is not ready piece yet but then after because first i print them or actually the it's surely you see me it's Charlie that uh, taught me the technique. Charlie's actually here. Uh, you don't want to be seen, but hey, he's, Charlie. Been, uh, he's, he's younger than me, like uh, uh, more than 10 years younger than me, but he's been here since he was like 17. Uh, and I was actually a, a printer when I was 17 because I studied uh, graphics and I was a printer. And then when I was in Milan for 15 years, he became like a, one of the leading printers in uh, Europe. So he's been oh. coming up with a lot of different techniques, which we do on this machine here, which is a big scale uh, flatbed uh, printer. Wow, the and magnet here, of this flatbed back, is big. Yeah, to get back to this image, we print them in a lot of different layers, you know, so it's not, it's on um, aluminum, it's from uh, airplane aluminum. Yeah, you can put it on the light maybe, you can see it even better. Hold on, Juan Carlos, and all of you guys. See if no it's problem. better. Yes. I don't know. It's difficult maybe to, for it to come out. But what we do is we print different layers. So we have several layers. And then when everything is done, we let it rest for a while. And then we wax it, you know, to get all the, the deep blacks to come out. So it's, a, it's a big, uh, it's a long front, it's a handcraft, you know. It's not, it's not like you put the bottom and it's done. It's like it takes takes a little bit of time. They become very Several unique. hours. My yeah. master said several hours. And uh, it, it's not a yoke. Because to, to get all the details, you have to print really slow and, uh, you know. That's fantastic. So yeah. then, you know, it's funny. You, you start to, to get very deep into black and white. But yeah. and immediately adapt color and such a magnitude that is, yeah. is just like that, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a spectacular man and, and this great different light. You know, of course, it's, it's a bit of a kitschy pop homage to David LaChapelle. Yeah, uh, tell I us know, about his work. Exactly. Like, yeah. I mean, what, when I started with photography and when I looked at, when, I'm, when I became older and I looked at MTV, you, you remember MTV. A lot of people don't remember MTV, but. I do. You know, the pop culture, uh, I had my, I mean, I always loved Herb Ritz. He's one of the greatest photographers that ever lived, I think. And that was my biggest inspiration. So that, obviously, that's black and white, you know. And so I always admired uh, black and white from uh, Avedon, Herb Ritz, Lindbergh. And so that was kind of my, became my base and my comfort zone and what, I, what I'm attracted to. But then, also, uh, you know, the MTV era, when uh, David LaChapelle came into the picture, he became, you know, did all those Britney Spears videos and everything. So much color. And, I mean, it, it's not what I usually like, but the way he did it, um, I fell in love with that work. So it's like it one of the first photographers which I like who was doing color. But then, going to Milan, I mean, whatever, you know, starting with my career as a photographer in fashion and stuff. I didn't really use a lot of uh, colors. But then a friend of mine who's one of the, I mean, leading uh, art directors here, here in uh, Gothenburg, Sweden, he also, he went to uh, St. Martin's in London. His name is Benjamin Lega. He's a great art director. And uh, he uh, started his own brand for swimwear. And he wanted to do iconic pictures. And he said, we wa I want to do, we want to go to Ibiza, no, to Marbella. We want to do uh, pictures that are, are iconic, and they're not. It's not going to be a catalog. It's going to be art, you know. So that was my, that was our meet, first meeting, our first brief, you know. And immediately, I thought about David Lachapelle, and I said I wanted to do an homage to David Lachapelle, and, and he he was thinking exactly the same way. 
and then we just went there. It's like you see, it's like beautiful blue skies, and it's like a lot of colors. And we just I wanted to do something different, which I really like. And yeah. um, it, it is amazing. Honest, it, with the help they're, too. they're urban, they're urban, but at the same time, you have such a special message of iconic. It's an iconic character, yeah. you know. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that was the the, the way, way we wanted to do it. Was like yeah, iconic. Yeah, yeah, it's like something that you look at it and it's like it stands out. It's like, yeah, uh, and I mean, he's quite a character, well as well the model Dave. What kind of camera do you use for? How do how do you get? This was also digital. Now I, I show you just my digital work. Now this is digital too because it was I shot all these images during most of these images during one day, so we were kind of shooting fast, you know, uh, two days actually, two days, and this. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we were just like me and, me and Benjamin, the art director, we were just like taking a lot of accessories and we were like just having a flow. We, everything, everywhere we looked, we saw a picture. So we were like going like crazy in Marbella. We, we shot them in Mar Marbella. And it was a one day where you... No, I, I mean, I, I was lying a little bit. I, I probably shot more than one day, but we did a lot in one day at least. We, shot, we saw locations everywhere and, and uh, yeah. Uh, this was actually not part that we did after that uh, that, that uh, picture there in front yeah. of the coca cola sign that we actually went from arbea to morocco the, another day and uh, that shot in morocco so we had guys with us it was like they wanted to show us the most beautiful places in uh, morocco and me and benjamin were like we see a coca cola sign and we go oh here we have to shoot here and the, the people we <laughs> were with from 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 Morocco, like these guys are crazy. You go to Morocco, all these beautiful surroundings, and you sh shoot against, uh, yeah. Yeah. Now to to see this this approach of uh, of taking advantage uh, advantage of urban culture, and 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 the color, you know, the saturation of the color of of the character with the environment is what make them absolutely astonishing. You know, I think that. Thank, the... Thank you. No, I. <laughs> It turned out good. We, and, and you have one pictures. on the back? You have one on the back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a big one because five. they were part of an exhibition in Stockholm, which we made with Charlie uh, here at Art Farm Design. We had uh, this uh, walk of uh, fame um, where we printed this is like 2.3 uh, meters times 1.5, one, uh, one and a half meters, time, more or less two and a half meters, one, one and a half meter, more or less. Wow. Yeah, I mean, you can see this is uh, actually on an aluminium uh, composite, uh, which is called the Bond, but uh, I have it here. We did today, me and Charlie, on paper. Not on this printer, on another printer. You can see. Can you see it like this? Yeah, a little lower. Your phone, yes. No. Here. So you see all the colors coming out. I call this one Mr. Donuts, you know? Ob ob obviously, <laughs> I call it Mr. Donuts. I could not co call it anything else. Yeah, it's true, it's true. I, and I, here we actually tried for the exhibition. This is, I mean, it's just uh, for our, it's um, printed on plexiglass, you see? So you can, this is yeah. just a technique we're using. But uh, yeah, so it's just the, like uh, small experiments. But this is on paper, which is, uh, yeah, which is then becoming to... Yeah. I'm, I'm, you, have create, you have created a limited edition of both series, and this is a beginning of our collaboration. And we're yeah. going to have you for sale in RC on First Tips and RSPIT on our website, and the prices are great. And I love how they bring two different kinds of happiness, you know, from the windy string black and white of, uh, to the string color. You know, and I think that two body of work that represent humanity in two different ways is just quite yeah. remarkable. That's, that's, what is your project next year, uh, Mike? Actually, this year is, I mean, I have a project which... I, I'm sorry, I just, asked, I just asked next year because I think I should delete 2020. 2020 is kind of... Yeah, 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 yeah. To not count. <laughs> we'll see. I mean, let's say we don't uh, tie it together with a year, but my next project is to, I, I want to continue more or less like I shot uh, the people from Ibiza, but different, uh, I mean, 
we have our own native Indians, like uh, Aboriginals up in the north, for example, which it's a population which a lot of people don't even, I mean, we don't give them a lot of uh, credit uh, uh, here in, in Sweden. I would like to see, they, there's a lot of different characters up there. I would like to do kind of the same thing and I go around the world and find interesting faces and just, not just, just the kind of young faces, generation of Vikings, older. maybe? Sorry, Giancarlo, I didn't hear you. The, the young generations of Vikings. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't want to shoot the, the young generation of Vikings, actually. They, they, they scare me. Uh, you know, the millennials, I don't know. Uh, I don't no, no, that's not for me. Yeah. Um, but the old generations of, uh, maybe not Vikings, but uh, like the Indians who have uh, up in the north, you call them, uh, I cannot not even say what they call because they're, I might offend someone, but uh, they're, uh, anyways. Yeah, but, it, but it's amazing, you know, to be able to document these tries, I call them, you know, they're yeah. still, it's, it's quite a project because it's an ongoing project of humanity and, and things. So that's your plan for this yeah. year coming and, and, and then future exhibitions and we're gonna bring the work here to America and it's gonna be for sale with us. And, yeah. um, and then, sure. you know, what kind of paper you use? On this, well, I mean, it depends, all the time it depends on the image, but here now we're using uh, uh, Hanne Miele uh, photo rag. It's kind of normal, but it turned out amazing on this picture. So we, we're elaborating before we like decide what paper to use and what not to use. We we elaborate, you know. But now it's a uh, yeah, it's classic paper, but it turned out really good on this uh, series. Yeah, it's the bright it's, white. It's, it's it's you know it's an archival, fantastic, beautiful yeah. paper. And the fact yeah. that you are that you put layers and layers and layers on it, you know, and and, and create this fantastic sort of yeah. Because then we do this special pieces even on aluminium which is like just like a few pieces but that's an yeah that's the that's a different technique and it's uh, yeah it's it's a uh, yeah it's that's another story but on on the paper it's a uh, it's a uh, photo rag that's fantastic that's fantastic it is yeah, it's not because to look at the look at the texture you know just to see again you know i don't know if you can yeah a little higher Okay, I'm um, a little bit, hold on, now it's, yeah, you see, oh, wow. you can see really the, it's, this is a, this is a small one, just, just a, like a test, you know, but and, it's to, some and to be able to enlarge it in such a big sort yeah. of matter is amazing, you know. Yeah, that's that... what mostly attracts me, I mean, if I ask Charlie, he would want to do them uh, three meters, but uh, because it attracts, because we can do it, you know, we can do big sizes, so why not, you know, let's do it. But uh, most most homes cannot have a uh, two two by two and a half meters. But uh, yeah, yeah, that's our other project is to print like huge, like as as big as you can. Uh, and we did it a lot of times before. Well, we are super excited to have you. Uh, you know, and and I think. As I mentioned, one of a, a, a very good art dealer here in Florida, Molly Parker, so they say that the light in your photos are perfection. They are. Thank you. They are thank really you, perfection. You. you know, you have take two worlds of so black and white and color and really have got deep into the skin, you know, of, yeah. of, of the people. So I, when we spoke, I was kind of uh, impressed by your uh, guts, so to speak, that you could choose those two to, to start with, you know, because two different series, but in a way, there is, like you said, they're the same. Even though they're black and white and very bright color, they, they have a sense of freedom to me, at least, you know, and uh, for you to, it could be a little bit confusing maybe for an artist to present himself with two different categories like this, but you, you, uh, you believe in, in that, and I, I did so too. I think it's uh, very, two very strong theories. Yeah. Like. I, I, think, I think, you know, in art, I think we are way up, you know, in a different moment, you know, where people have to just be doing one thing at the same time. There's too mm -hmm. many wonderful elements, and we have too much information and do, and it's very easy to do different things. The one, the, the, the difficult things is to make them right. 
you know, yeah. and that is what it's all about. So, so for you to explore to such a depth, black and white and color, it deserves to have the attention of the people, you know. We have uh, three um, limited editions for um, each of the prints. And they're, yeah. very sh they're very small. Uh, you don't want it to make them very big because you no, want to continue. Small in sense of uh, limited, but uh, actually big, quite big in, uh, in the format. Yeah, yeah we're going to have only five, which is fantastic, you know, of the big ones. And, yeah. and, and then, you know, you have more work. And, and, and I'm very, very excited to collaborate with you. And, and it's just part of... Um, of a great beginning, I would say. So thank you so much for being thank with you. us. Thank you, thank you, Carlos. Thank you. I really hope to see you soon. When actually, it's on my bucket list to go to. I mean, not bucket list, but I had to go to Miami for for actually for work. And yes. uh, then hopefully, I mean, of course, we, we're going to meet. And if you want to come here, I invite invite you to come here when all this situation is over. It's so funny. You have a bucket list, Miami. I have a bucket list to go to Scandinavia. So I'm glad that you are the second or third person I know there. I thank yeah. you very much for taking the time to talk thank to you. us, to show us your work, to, to be able to, to describe what you are doing. I invite people to see, you know, our, your work in our website, the Art Design Project, at RC, yeah. at Arts Fair and First Tips, and, and to follow him on his amazing Instagram too. And thank you so much. I wish you a wonderful weekend. Thank you. Do you know what I'm going to do now? And this is not usually for Sweden. I'm going to go and take a bath. <laughs> it's so hot here now. That's why I'm a little bit reddish. You know, it's so hot here. So I'm going to go and swim. That's good. Great. Well, have a good okay. time. All thank my you best. very much for your uh, very nice talk to you. And see you soon. See you soon. Bye-bye. Okay, bye.